G'day, it's Paul. I'm a local guide from Melbourne in Australia. And today I'm talking to Penny, who's a local guide from Sydney. Hi, Penny. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your local guide's level and where you're from? Uh, my name is Penny. I'm from Sydney, Australia, and my local guide's level is level nine. Um, trying really hard to get to 10. <laughs> Um, cool. Yeah, I know I'm so excited, but I like it to be, you know, a natural progression. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it took me about five years to hit level 10. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, interestingly, I think it took me less time to get from nine to 10 than it took me to get to nine. Oh, really? Isn't that weird? Yeah, that is weird <laughs> because it's more, it's double points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll flick over to your profile for a minute so you're actually not that far away from level 10 which is pretty yeah, cool yeah. <laughs> that's kind of awesome yeah it's exciting mm -hmm. so penny what do you think your favorite achievement has been as a local guide uh, my favorite achievement um as a local guide on google maps you mean oh, or in on maps or something you've achieved maybe a trip or Whatever you like. Yeah. Well, my favourite achievement to date is becoming a Connect moderator. Um, that was pretty cool. And that was only just recently. So I'm still beaming, you know, with pride, I guess. Um, so that's really cool. And um, being able to meet all these amazing local guys from all over the world at Connect um, in San Francisco at Google headquarters, that was so cool. It was mind blowing. So, yeah. <laughs> That's an amazing amount of fun. You yeah. Turn up there Same. as uh, a bunch of 200 strangers and leave as a family. Yeah, really, really does feel like family now. Like, look at us. We're so, you know, yeah. we don't anywhere near each other, but we're so, I feel like family. So. Yeah, we still still keep chatting and we visited each other and even though we're a thousand yeah. kilometres apart. I know, it's so cool. <laughs> it's amazing how many people don't realise just how big Australia actually is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So our discussions about photography and in the local guides context. So how do you important do you think photography is for local guides? Uh, local guides for me, if photography is the highest um, priority, basically, because I think um, on Google Maps when you're doing reviews and stuff. I think photos tell a story more than words because um, people read things differently. I think photos um, will show you exactly what you're looking at and where you're going. So very important to me. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your favourite go-to device for uh, making your photos for Maps? Oh, my trusty old iPhone, basically. Yeah, because it's all. Yep, it's always in my pocket. Um, it's quick, easy, click. Yeah. Well, that's the key thing, isn't it? The uh, best camera for any situation is the one you've got in your hand. Yeah, yeah. I used to use, right in the beginning, like four or five years ago when I first started contributing, I had a um, just a little snapshot camera in my phone. But by the time I'd pull it out, it was like a, a bit of a hassle. So this is, yeah, great. So much um, better. Yeah. And when, when you're um, grabbing food photos and stopping people eating, the quicker you are, the, uh, more, they, the more they like you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, otherwise they've eaten it. It's like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, well, do you mind if we have a look at some of your contributions and, and chat about them? Yeah, go for it. So this image is about the entrance to a place. Why do you think it's important to share the entrance? Um, basically, so you can see, you know, how to get into a place if it's accessible, um, uh, easy to find. This particular one is inside an, another building, so there's another entrance to this entrance. So, it, yeah, really important for people to know that on the street you can't see it, but it's there. And, and it really it's one of those interesting things about modern shopping centres. They tend to grow organically and they're a labyrinth inside. 
So yeah. being able to see a couple of other landmark shops around the one you want is really helpful. So it's cool. Yeah, that's right. So in this image, Penny, we can see a, an interesting place and there's some stuff going on there. Um, mm -hmm. What do you want to tell us about that? Uh, this was a an art class that I did recently. Um, and basically it shows you what happens or can happen within the space if you want to join in and do one of these things. So it's not just an empty room that you might see in other photos. So it just shows you how cool it can be. Yeah, I think it's really awesome. It shows you the, the type of activity. It shows you that it seems to be instructor led and that there's yeah. a bunch of people who are sharing a like activity and looking like yeah. they're enjoying themselves quite a bit. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So in this shot, Penny, we can see a delicious looking meal. What can you tell mm -hmm. us about that and perhaps the technique you use to light that since it appears to be in a difficult lighting situation? Yeah, it was really dark in this restaurant. Nighttime, obviously, with low light. Um, my technique, I don't like to use flash, so it's not flash from my actual phone um, because that always um, never looks good. I don't know why with food. So my trick is to grab somebody else's phone and turn on their torch and shine the torch onto the food in a certain way where there's no shadows and then I take the photo um, in the best angle. That's my technique anyway. And that's a really cool way to do it because you've put um, quite a bit of light onto the meal and yep. you've left the background dark so the, the confusing elements or distracting elements from behind it have essentially have disappeared because they don't have any light on them. Yeah. Have you, exactly. ever, have you ever put a napkin over the phone torch to uh, soften the light oh. a little bit? No, I haven't. Ah. Yeah, it's a trick I use sometimes. And, and you can use different colours too. So if you use a, a yellow one or a red one, you can actually change the balance of light around the food too. Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to try that. Yeah, it's okay. fun. Yeah, I'll try that. Just as a plug, one of the uh, workshops in my series happens to talk all about that. So uh, maybe I'll put... I did not that one <laughs> maybe, maybe i'll put a link to that workshop in the video i think you should <laughs> all right i'll uh, stage the next one now okay so i love the sense of style in this one with the uh, black and white bottles against the black and white background uh, so I, I know you have quite a bit of style in the way you do things and the way you organize things uh, do you want to talk about this shot a little oh uh, this one just caught my eye i was walking out of the restaurant um, walking down the stairs and thought, oh, wow, that looks so awesome. But I had to take it in a certain angle because there was um, like a railing in front of it. So it was like a matter of getting the right perspective so I could get that, that shot. And it was like a quick click and run after my friends. <laughs> well, 90% of photography is opportunity. And yeah. thinking it through and getting rid of distracting things like a handrail or whatever, that's what we have to do. So you end up with a, a much better image when you do things like that. So it's really yeah. cool. It is cool. So I know one of your favourite things about mapping is being able to present accessibility features, or in this case, what to me seems like a lack of accessibility features. Do you want to talk about that a little bit and why you think that's important? Uh, um, accessibility in on Google Maps um, as a local guide is really important because we're helping other people navigate their, their way around, you know, the the world basically. And um, places like this one in particular, it's a park with these stairs that are just, first of all, not accessible even to a normal person. They are so difficult to walk up because they've fallen and they're just, uh, I've called the council about them, but these ones will show you that, you know, they're, they're difficult to get up just to, to go into this, this park. So, yeah, people need to do this stuff. And people who can't get around, it's a lot more people than people think. So people tend to think when they think of accessibility, they just think about wheelchairs, but it's really people who've had an operation, it's people with bad knees and hips and things like that. It's a, a huge part of our community. Yeah, exactly. There's all the other aspects of accessibility as well about whether it's got hearing loops and whether mm -hmm. there's uh, lighting. Uh, a recent one that I've seen starting to come up is places advertising that they have a, a quiet room that's got muted lighting and muted sound. For, and that's really good for people with uh, 
spectrum children. Yeah, I like that. I noticed um, uh, Coles, I think it was, a supermarket who will do a one hour in the mornings or something like that for that, that is quiet and lower lighting specifically for, you know, people with, uh, you know, the sensory issues and yeah. stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is very cool. And our, our world is changing and becoming more accepting gradually. Yeah, yeah, we exactly. Need, we need Great. more of it. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so you're a bit like me. You put photos of toilets on maps. There's, there's <laughs> nothing quite like a dunny out in the public. Um, do you want to talk about why we do that? <laughs> well, for me especially, I need to go to the toilet all the time and I need to know if there's one available for me <laughs> where I'm going. So, yeah, I, I will put photos of toilets on Google Maps. <laughs> yeah, well, it's really handy to know a restaurant or a shop's got a toilet. Um, in yeah. this one, you can also see some accessibility features. So you can see it's got a wide doorway. There's clutch bars for people getting up and down, and there's enough room beside the pan for a wheelchair to maneuver. Yeah. A wider door, and yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, which probably means someone who's chair bound can actually look after themselves in that place as long as they've got some arm movement. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which is really yeah. important for people's freedom and their getting around in the world. Yeah, exactly. Or even for a young family who might have a a pram or something like that or need to take two children inside with them so yeah makes it easier yeah absolutely so i just ran a, a few seconds of that one so there's a, a lot of ways to use videos effectively on maps the maps team recommend that we use portrait mode, which you have there. So it's the upright mode rather than landscape, portrait, landscape. That one's showing us the vibe of that place and showing us that they have live music. How critical do you think that is, particularly now? Um, it shows the atmosphere of a place that a, a photo, a still photo can't show you. Um, so you can see what it's like to be in there before going see if that's your kind of vibe um if you'd like to be there yeah so videos are really important to me yeah yeah i, I find videos for restaurants really handy because you can also see what the volume level's like because there's sometimes you might want to just go somewhere and have a quick bite and you probably don't care but if you want to go and have a conversation with someone so if it's someone going out on a date or something like that they want to actually be able to hear the person that they're taking with them yeah this is true. All right. So what do you think is the most effective way to contribute photography on Connect, moving away from maps for a moment? Well, I, I guess um, you and I as moderators, we probably see hundreds of posts every day going on to Connect. I, some of those I'll connect with, bad wording, but there you go. Some of those I connect with more than others. Um, I find the images that are by themselves are probably it's just an image you don't know where the place was you don't know anything about the feeling so i kind of like the ones that have a bit of a story with them yeah yeah so they can tell us what they're actually seeing where they've been why they're showing us this photo what does it mean to them um have they actually been there do they go there often yeah so i i think it tells us a story about them and their life basically. Yeah, it gives us a little bit of their culture and an insight into to the places that they like. Yeah, yeah, it helps us, yeah, connect because that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Um, people all over the world and that way we can become friends. <laughs> yeah, I also find it helps to understand whether the photo is actually theirs or they've just shared someone else's photo because they know a little bit about it. So it suggests that um, it probably is their image. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Very important. Oh, well, one last question today. Is there anything else you'd like to say about photography for local guides? Uh, photography for local guides, again, I'll say is probably the most important thing in my perspective anyway, because uh, I'm a visual person. Uh, so uh, make sure it's, you know, lighted up well um, and... Uh, you can these days use horizontal portrait mode 
um, but sure. make sure. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I, um, I actually asked the creator of Google Maps um, back in February about that, and he said, "Yeah, you can use whichever side you like. Yeah. We'll make it work." So that was really cool to know. Um, yeah, because you, you're showing people where you are and um, what a place looks like, basically. So I think it's really important. Yeah, I think it's a great way to share the places that you visit and the places that you like. And to put it in maps terms, it um, helps you find the places worth visiting and the things worth doing. Yep, exactly. You're contributing to the world. You are basically. indeed. Yeah, a lot of people ask why um, you get involved in local guides and you know, yes, we are helping a, a large multinational organisation make more money, but there's a much more important aspect than that is that we're helping our local communities. Yeah, exactly. And how else would we be able to do that? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. at the moment, it's really important to support small business because much of the world's in uh, lockdown to one degree or another. Some areas yeah. are opening up. I know Sydney is a lot more open than Melbourne is at the moment. We're hoping to get out soon. I hope you do. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, we'll see what happens. So yeah. thanks heaps for your time today, Penny. And uh, it's been thanks, really good to chat about photography on maps for local guides and a little bit about Connect. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. That was fun. You're very welcome.